Reflections with Marilyn Baker. Brought to you by Torch Trust, the Christian organization with a vision for people with sight loss. Hello and welcome to Reflections from Torch Trust, the show that focuses on faith and disability in today's world. I'm Chris Byland, in for Marilyn Baker this week, and it's wonderful once again to have your company. This week on Reflections, we'll hear from the Team GB Paralympian Carrie Adenigan, the celebrated wheelchair racer who took some time out during her time in Paris at this year's Games to talk to us about her life in sport and God. Reflections from Torch Trust. Thank you so much for joining us. You're one of the UK's most celebrated athletes. If you were to jump back right now to when you were a child, did you ever dream or even believe you would have such success that you've had now? Uh, Not really, to be honest. So my story was all about being inspired by the game. So even just to be a Paralympian was a big deal. But the fact that I've got, you know, Paralympic medals to my name as well is just insane and not necessarily something that I expected starting the sport. When did your love of sport first begin then? It was definitely through the Paralympics. So I did do a bit of sport, like I did a bit of wheelchair basketball before doing uh, wheelchair athletics. Uh, But really, it was getting on that track and doing wheelchair racing. And I think literally instantly, as soon as I got on the track, that was October 2012. I just felt such a freedom of going fast around the track. And yeah, I think that's where the love started. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, You mentioned the basketball there. Have you ever been tempted to go back? To be honest, when it's freezing cold and we're doing winter training and it's raining outside, I'm like, oh, you know, (laughs) could have been indoors. But um, days like this, for example, as I'm training in Paris right now, it's just so lovely and I absolutely love being outside. Uh, Now here on Reflections, we talk about disability and faith in a number of ways. We've spoken to Dave Clark, CEO of Paralympics GB, and we've heard from the International Paralympic Committee too, ahead of this year's Games in Paris. Paralympic sport has come a really, really long way from when it first began. And both Dave and the IPC spoke passionately about how the barriers to accessing sport has become easier and people's perceptions of disability have softened. But I wondered whether as an athlete, you've noticed those changes from when you first started out as an athlete to perhaps now. Yeah, I think so. I think disability is something that is even celebrated more in the sense of, you know, our difference and the fact that we you know, have different abilities. And actually, we celebrate what athletes can do, but we also celebrate, you know, the way that they're able to overcome, you know, challenges um, that they face. And I definitely think that's the case. But also, I think, you know, disability sport is elite sport and there's a lot more respect for us as athletes. Um, So I think that's one of the ways that definitely attitudes have progressed. And it's amazing to be um, a part of that as well. And what about your faith? You're really passionate about sharing the gospel through your interviews and, of course, on social media. When did you first find your love for Jesus? Um, yeah, I've been a Christian for a lot of my life, to be fair, because I was brought up um, in the church. Uh, but by all means, there's ups and downs. When I was at school, I did struggle a bit. I did a philosophy A-level and I did have questions of like, how do I even know this is all true? Um, but I did feel like when I went to university, I definitely my faith rekindled. And um, I just feel like that sense of stability and secureness, like through the gospel. And I think it does give me that strength, having that relationship with God. And um, I'm very fortunate that through sport, I'm able to, you know, talk about sport and talk about faith. So, yeah. It's good. God is very clearly at the centre of everything that you're doing. Is he whispering to you when you're on the starting line waiting for a race to begin or even during a race? Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. I think I always try and like be very prayerful in everything. And if anything, I do get that sense of peace that, you know, as it says in like Romans 8, verse 28, which I have to remind myself of like all the time about how, you know, all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So I think those are the kind of things that go through my mind. And I just feel like the Holy Spirit just reminds me of those kind of scriptures when I could get a bit nervous, but just remember that, you know, God's in control. So. And you mentioned there that you you do go out and you share your faith. And are you able to share it with other athletes and coaches, especially while you're at the Games this year? Um, yeah, I try to. I guess the thing is, you know, we have so many opportunities where we just have conversations like at lunch or at breakfast or whatever. So I feel like sometimes, you know, faith comes into conversation. Um, I have a particular athlete who's always asking me about stuff around faith. So we try not to 
obviously it, it's very like warm by all means but yeah we do kind of discuss things um but yeah it, it's really amazing that i have the opportunity to just share my faith and i think it's just something that just happened naturally you know because it's just part of who i am so. mm, absolutely and of course we're all called to spread the gospel how do you go about when you get a bit of a knockback online or perhaps the people you're sharing with do you got any tips as to how you deal with that um yeah i mean it's, it's challenging at times but i think i know like all i can do is really just share what i believe and just try and stick to what the gospel says and like by all means yeah i'm open about it but i accept that you know everybody has different you know perspectives and stuff and i think one thing that i've learned is just to listen as well like we've got to always listen to to one another and respect one another and um yeah and just show god's love through that as well because i think it's important that we're gracious you know in the way that we share our faith in as well mm, absolutely and what about away from the track and you're not preparing for an event or perhaps even training, what do you like to do to relax? Um, so at the moment, I've been reading quite a lot. Um, also, like, obviously, like a lot of people, Netflix, YouTube, <laughs> anything to keep me busy whilst I'm here. Um, but yeah, obviously, I was doing like the podcasting as well. Um, so I just try and do things like that just to be able to think about and talk about things other than uh, sport. Mm, absolutely. Is there anything on your heart right now that you would like to share, whether that's about God or if it's about the Paralympics? Is there anything that you're burning to share with anyone? I think gratitude probably has been something that's really been like on my heart, like being really grateful, you know, for the moments yeah. that we have. Um, and I think especially being here, you know, having that that gratitude and realising that, yeah, it's such a blessing to be able to do what I do. And I think it's important that we just have that and just being present, you know. Um, and yeah, I think doing things from a place of thankfulness, I feel like that gets rid of a lot of the kind of anxiety that can come with, with life. So I think just, yeah, going into everything with gratitude and, and yeah, positivity is, is a good thing. What can we be praying for you and perhaps others? Um, I think by all means, like safety. That would be a great thing. Praying for safety for the team and for everyone like out here, obviously. Um, but yeah, I guess it's just um, having that peace in what I do. Also for opportunities to share uh, my faith as well. I think it's important for me. And I just hope to be an ambassador of Christ while I'm here. Like I'm really conscious of trying to, you know, because I think that's the thing about being an athlete, when a Christian athlete, when you share your faith, I'm conscious that I have to live by it. You know, I don't want it just to be words that I say, I want it to be my attitude and who I am. So my prayer is always that that shows, you know, um, mm. rightly. Is there anything that you do to make sure that you, you mentioned there that you always want to make sure that you're doing the right thing? Is there anything or any routine that you have or set way of doing that? Yeah, I mean, I think whilst I'm here, it's just being um, committed to what I do at home. Uh, so something like my routines, like if it's like reading my Bible, praying, like all those things I try and do whilst I'm away. So it's all about just kind of keeping those things. And I think it just sets me in the right place when I make sure that I'm disciplined with those things. I think it just puts me in the right mindset and also reminds me, you know, of like who I am and, and why I'm here. Is there a big Christian community at Paris this year? Kind of actually, there are other Christian athletes that I know on the team, which which is really nice. Um, but also, like when we go out to the village, I know that there's you know chaplains, there's like a multi faith centre. So I'm hoping to kind of connect with people there as well. So I'm really encouraged that there is like quite a Christian presence, you know, on the team in athletics, but also you know in different sports and lives. That's really really great. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us here on Reflections. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Reflections from Torch Trust. Our thanks once again to the British athlete Carrie Adenigan for taking some time with us to chat about sports, her love of God and how she wants her faith to be evident in everything she does in life. It's time now for our thought of the week, which is all about the Lord of the Dance. It's read for us by Paul Rhodes. Today, Alan Vogt, a long-standing friend of Torch Trust, shares his thoughts on the famous song Lord of the Dance. If you know this song, why not sing along? Lord of the Dance is a popular song written by Sidney Carter and sung to a lively American tune. The words are written as though Jesus was singing them, picturing the Christian life as a dance with Jesus as the leader. This may seem rather fanciful, but we read in the Bible that Jesus went to a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Jewish weddings were always joyful celebrations, with plenty of singing and dancing, linking arms and dancing round in a circle in time with the lively Jewish music. I'm pretty sure Jesus joined in. I can't imagine he would be standoffish. There he made the water into wine to liberate the family from the disgrace of having insufficient refreshment for the party. 
In many countries, pure drinking water is hard to come by, and if you can afford it, wine is popular. The Bible speaks of wine bringing joy to the heart, but does warn of excessive drinking, causing drunkenness and a loss of self-control. This remarkable miracle has two special features, the quality and quantity of the wine. The master at the banquet was amazed that the best wine had been reserved until later in the feast and that the abundance of the huge jarfuls ensured sufficient wine for the remaining days of the festivities. This reminds me of the Apostle Paul's words of the riches of God's grace for us who don't deserve his love. You can make an acrostic of the word grace, G for God's, R for riches at, C for Christ's, and E for expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Jesus paid the price by standing in our place, as if he, not we, were guilty of the wrongdoing. There's a verse in that song, Lord of the Dance, that goes, I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me on high and they left me there on the cross to die. But it ends, they cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I live in you and if you'll live in me, I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Thank you to Paul for reading us this week's thoughts. What a great take on Lord of the Dance. Well, that's just about it from us this week on Reflections. But before we go, here's just a quick taster of who we'll be hearing from next week. That's something that we really need to address because there are people who do not attend church for many reasons, through either inability or because they've been hurt by church as well. Another one of the issues that comes up to us a lot is the fact that people have even been led to believe that it's their own fault that they're suffering or it's because they don't have enough faith in God. <laughs> yeah, that I've they had are. that one. <laughs> yeah, and it's absolutely I'm blamed by the shocking week, but... to me. I've had it as well. And I know it's absolutely shocking to me to see how widespread it is in our community. There are so many people who have been either told that I've got the faith. God's, you know, God's obviously got the faith. You must be the person who's the missing link here. You know, and that's <laughs> awful. And yeah, that really is, a, you know, that could make people have a wrong impression of God. That could make people have a wrong impression of what a church community should be. And you know, that's that's something that we're really fighting as. You know, I, I you know, I did have enough faith to receive healing and. That really breaks my heart that mm. um, people are being told that yeah. and thinking that they're not able to go to church because they don't have enough faith. It's the opposite to what I, I read of Jesus in the, in the Gospels in the New Testament. We're modelling what Jesus did. He never went out and said, so could you prove exactly what it is you're suffering with? <laughs> no, he went no. up to people and said, would you like to be loved? Would you like to hear from me? And yeah. so we're trying to model that. Yeah. What do you want me to do for you? He often asks. Yes. Didn't he? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Not yeah. just assume. That's the one thing I love about that particular passage, is Jesus didn't assume. Oh, you must want this. Yeah. Mm. Hands on. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Jesus took a step back, thought about it, and asked the question. And that's the model that we want to follow. That's the team from You Belong There, and we'll hear more about their story and how they're supporting Christians living with chronic pain or illness next time here on Reflections. Don't forget to find out more about Torch Trust and the work it's doing to support people with sight loss across the UK, that you can give them a call on 01858 438 260, and they'll be only too happy to help in any way that they can, whether that's helping to find some Bible resources, some Braille text, or more information about sight loss friendly churches. That number once more is 01858 438 260. Or you can find them online at torchtrust.org. That's torchtrust.org. Until the next time, from me, Chris Byland, God bless. Reflections from Torch Trust.